or particulate, you know, because they are small enough to penetrate the filter of your hard drive, and they're still big enough to cause a hard drive to crash. So that's a that's not a minor concern. I mean, it really is a main main concern when you have a computer. You don't want people to smoke around it. Yep. What What can you do? To, is there any way to repair that? Because my mom actually smokes a lot. She's had, I think, two or three hard drives out so far this year. <laughs> You can go for some you know, hard drive and data recovery service. You know, they do charge you quite a bit of money, so it depends on whether the data on the hard drive is worth the try. There are also programs out there that you can try you know, yourself and to, to see if you can retrieve you know, at least some of the data from the hard drive. Um, so if you look into uh, like hard drive data recovery using Google, then you will find both you know, services. They will have you to send a hard drive in, and they will try their best to recover the data. You can also you know, look into programs that can try to do it, you know, and you can run the programs yourself. Yep. They also have this new device I saw on the internet the other day that for people to smoke, and when you use it, there's no smoke coming off the cigarette. You might fire one of those. Yeah. It's, it cases a cigarette and you smoke it through this device and there's no smoke. They also have this smokeless cigarette too. Have you guys seen the smokeless cigarette? The electronic one? Yeah, <laughs> the electronic cigarette. It has a, like a blue LED. <laughs> Instead of an amber color, you know, the cigarette has a blue LED. And it has uh, the aerosol devices. Uh, you have to insert a nicotine you know, <coughs> cartridge and it is battery operated. So what happens is I think it senses the vacuum, you know, when people you know, suck on the other end, suck on the filter end. And it actuates, you know, the electronics to um, atomize the, uh, the whatever product is inside the car cartridge. So it gives people the, the nicotine, you know, and also the, 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 I guess, the posture of smoking, but without actually emitting any, you know, um, combustion type of smoke. It's not the same, though. That's right. <laughs> it's not the same. <laughs> Well, they say one of the one of the things, one of the easiest, well, not easiest, but one of the best thing you can do to improve your health is you know, is to quit smoking. Yep. Yeah. So, and the benefit is more when you're younger. Okay. If I try to, if I pick up smoking right now, you know, the kind of damage that can be done to me would be kind of limited. So, the younger you are, you know, the more you should think about you know, stopping smoking because you know it it has more impact down the line. If I were, you know, 80 or 90 years old and I pick up smoking, do you think anyone would care? <laughs> because I probably would die from, you know, many other different reasons first. <laughs> the human body is not designed to live that long. I mean, just, you know, centuries ago, you know, the average, you know, age of a person is about what 40 ish so I, I'm dead by now <laughs> yep I heard that they think that the person that's going to live to be 150 is already born probably it depends on the country too you know certain countries have you know more the like zone. Hmm? The blue zone according to like the discovery channel really the blue zone I think the Japanese is one of those um, so is uh, Central America. They've got uh, several indigenous countries down there that are considered blue zones that people live to be 120. Wow. What am I going to do with all those you know, those 40 extra years? I can research more electronic cigarettes, yeah. right? I had, I had a man who was to be 103, and that's probably because her life is not complicated. Yep, so yep, that will, that will certainly help. So Smart Smoker is a brand of e-cigarette, a device created mm -hmm. to help you with your smoking addiction. E-cigarettes are electronic. Okay, I'll let you guys read too. Uh, uh, electronic substitutes for cigarettes. It looks exactly like an ordinary one, but it's full of electronics. So you can inhale the electronics instead of the smoke, right? <clears throat> so 
It holds a tiny chamber of nicotine and a small amount of water. When the user starts inhaling a sensor, so it's basically sensor-based, it's activated, which detects the flow of air, then it act, actual, activates an atomizer, which creates a vapor from the nicotine, which is what the, smoke, the user smokes in the end. So it's basically just water and nicotine, without the tar at least. It's a miniature uh, sm uh, fogger, basically. <laughs> if you want to think of it that way, it's basically a little fogger, you know, using just water and nicotine, you know, to you know create the effect of smoke. So it contains none of the tobacco's harmful ingredients. Um, but isn't nicotine one of the harmful <laughs> ingredients? <laughs> hmm? That is the addicting part because that's uh, nicotine itself is a uh, neurotoxin for insects. Yep. They, well, according to this deal, they do taste exactly like tobacco s smoke, and they produce some the same sensation in the user. Well, you know. <laughs> it definitely tastes like water vapor with a tint of nicotine. <laughs> 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 yep. And it probably comes with a USB cable to charge it to. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I mean, you know, how would you charge something like that? Yeah, you don't want to have to, you know, have to have buy like six of these things, you know, because you know it, it runs out of you know battery. So one thing that you can do is to have a micro USB connector and have it get recharged, you know, when you use a computer. The you packet know? comes and probably gets plugged into the wall, and if you put the cigarette back in the packet, it'll charge then. Yep. I was wondering what you thought of the um, the pads that supposedly charge your cell phones and things. Do you think that's a uh, means to charge something like that? You mean using uh, an oscillated magnetic field? That's basically how it works. It depends on the device, you know, because on a on a bigger device, you know, where you can actually put a magnetic coil, you know, you can do it that way. This device, you know, the the e-cigarette, you know, seems a little bit too small to have the the proper inductor coil inside to do the recharging, you know, to be done that way. It can be done that way, but it will increase the weight of the of the e-cigarette, which is something that they don't want to do. Yep, go ahead. Uh, the blue cigarettes, the blue e-cigarettes, actually have a crystal on them, which is a USB stick. So it recharges using the USB connection, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, it makes sense to have a, C, a USB connector because you can now get a, a car USB, you know, adapter. Mm -hmm. Then you can recharge it in the car too. And there's no need to, uh, you know, you know, <laughs> get rid of the um, the ash. You know, it's just like sticking the cigarette out the window a little bit. The last time, you know, I was following a, an SUV in my convertible with a top down, and the guy you know, tossed out a, uh, a cigarette. Fortunately, it bounced off my windshield and actually you know, you know, just bounced off, you know, did not land inside the, co co the cockpit, because I would be pretty upset if it lands on me. <clears throat> yep. Hmm? Sorry? Now I just have to drive faster. <laughs> I once drove, you know, at night, you know, not knowing it was about to rain. So, sure enough, you know, halfway through, you know, the way I drive home, it started raining, it was drizzling, not really major raining. So, you know, when by the time I got home, not a single drop in the cockpit, in in the in the, in the, in the compartment. If you drive fast enough, you know, the airflow will basically make sure the rain, you know. It does not land inside the car. Yeah, they, they, did, they did a MythBusters test on that. Mm-hmm. And it works. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, it does. I think all convertibles, convertibles should have a rain deflection spoiler. You know, that would be one practical use of a spoiler. <laughs> did, did you drive a convertible? Hmm? That's what it was just saying. An old one, you know. It smells like burnt oil. <laughs> Which is the best, you know, theft deterrent. You know, potential car thief, you know, walks up to the car, goes like, 
No, probably not this one. <laughs> I don't want to be burnt alive, right? <laughs> the car may burst in flame in the next stop sign. No, probably not this one. <laughs> so they might have atomizer for you know for that burnt oil smell too. You know, you buy you buy a brand new Luxus, you, you install one of those devices, you park the car, it emits that you know burnt oil smell. To basically deter any potential car thieves, you know, from casing the car, go like, yeah, it looks kind of brand new, but I really don't like that burnt oil smell, you know, or the coolant smell. Okay, that's what well, the mixture of the two is even worse, you know, because that usually means you have a gasket, you know, um, leak, not a leak. Uh, how do you call it? A, a, an engine gas. Uh, Crack the gasket. A head gasket. That is, what, it, it, it's not called leaking. Right. Cracked. No, not cracked. A blown head gasket. Yep. So, you know, most car thieves won't you know, try to drive with a, drive away with a car that has a known problem like that. Yeah, I think that's far more effective than the alarms. And your neighbors will thank you too because it doesn't beep and, you know, <laughs> scream all night long just because a cat lands on the hood, right? <clears throat> I do because it disturbs my sleep. <laughs> you know, there is a mechanical lock you can get that you can hide somewhere underneath your seat of your car or somewhere inside the cab, and it actually turns the fuel system on. Oh, okay. So that the, your car is only going to run a block from your house mm -hmm. before it runs out of gas. <coughs> Most thieves won't take the time to try to figure out. If the car quits running, they're bailing and running. <laughs> so your car is only going to be about a block from <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> Still, yeah, it's just like a, it's like a uh, campus lock. Mm -hmm. And you can, uh, the way they got it set up, you can, you can put it anywhere on your vehicle where the fuel. But it can potentially be dangerous because you have to base insert that device into the fuel delivery, you know, system. And the device actually is up underneath the car, and the lock is on the inside. Oh, okay. So you don't bring the fuel into the car. Right. The, the <laughs> okay, that's better. <laughs> yep. Uh, if you really wanted to, you can just pop the keys out of that uh, box. Yep. Yeah, yep. Uh, it's easy to do. <laughs> yep. Like for my car alarm, even if someone gets gets inside and the alarm is activated, you can't turn on the car. It just doesn't. It doesn't like. It. So well, it has what they call a, a an ignition in, <laughs> inhibitor. You know, but I think some car thieves you know, know how to get around that one because that that type of device has been around for long enough. They have to locate to where the, the the module is. Once they locate the module, you know, it can be you know, it can be done. <laughs> yeah, just drive an older car. You know, yep. I, I just heard of this story where this guy uh, was having his car repossessed and he had GPS in the car, and they stopped his car like remotely. Like when he got to an intersection, and yep. within like 20, 30 minutes, the tow truck was there, and he was like, I didn't call it a tow truck, but so, and, and then they were off with this car. Yep, they can <laughs> certainly do that. All right, moving right along. Windows. Hey, Windows is related to cars because I think you know, many new cars now run a fairly sophisticated interface you know, with the, the console. Do you guys know what type of operating system do they use with cars like that? It's a, it's a version of Windows. Yeah. Okay. That's interesting because you know when you're halfway, you know, halfway through your trip, you know, it will ask you, "Do you want an update?" <laughs> a new patch is now available. Just don't drive that car on Tuesdays. <laughs> <laughs> A new p security patch is now available. Do you want to install it now? <laughs> Do you want custom install or auto install, right? I mean. <laughs> and, and when it's all done, you know, it will do all the downloading using 3G or whatever technology, and then it will auto reboot, right? <laughs> when you're still driving on the highway. Don't forget the bill you're going to get. Hmm? Don't forget the GPS bill you're going to get for using the system. Yep. I think that 